Hey everybody. Today we're constructing confidence intervals using the t-distribution. When we've constructed confidence intervals up till now, we've used this formula. Mu equals x bar plus or minus z star sigma over the square root of n. So we're approximating the population mean mu with the sample mean x bar plus or minus some margin of error. And that margin of error is going to have to do with the population standard deviation sigma, the sample size n, and a critical z-score chosen based on our level of confidence for our interval. Now, this formula assumes that we know the population standard deviation, sigma. In some cases, that's a pretty good assumption. For example, we might be doing measurements on a piece of scientific equipment with known error tolerance like a bathroom scale where the level of accuracy might be provided by the manufacturer. Often, however, it's a ridiculous assumption to think that we might know the population standard deviation in advance. For example, could we really know in advance that the standard deviation of starting salaries for all data scientists in the United States is $8,000? Probably not. So it's going to be natural for us to just estimate that population standard deviation sigma with the sample standard deviation s, and then to construct a confidence interval in much the same way as we did before. And we can get away with that, but only if we put in a little bit of work first. This exact formula isn't quite going to work. So let's talk a little bit about where that formula comes from. Confidence intervals for the population mean are based on the sampling distribution of the sample mean, x bar. What does that mean? You have to imagine going out and collecting many, many, many samples of the same size and getting a sample mean, x bar, for each one. So you're going to have a whole distribution of different values of x bar. The central limit theorem says that the distribution of all the possible x bars is going to be approximately normal and that its mean is going to be mu, the same as the population mean, and the standard deviation is going to be sigma divided by the square root of n. And this will hold as long as the sample size n isn't too small. This means that any individual sample mean, x bar, can be described using a z-score. z sub x bar is x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n, because the distribution of x bar is going to be normal. So the formula for a confidence interval for the population mean with known standard deviation just comes from solving this formula, um, the formula for z sub x bar, for mu, and then using a, um, a z cutoff based on the confidence level c that you've chosen. Now, if we approximate the population mean sigma with, I'm sorry, if we approximate the population standard deviation sigma with a sample standard deviation, s, we get a very similar looking formula, x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. But it's not, but this variable is no longer going to have a normal distribution. The denominator this time is going to be different for every single sample. Every time we go out and get a new sample of size n, we get a new x bar as well as a new s. This means that this variable is going to have more variability than the one that we saw on the previous slide, the z-score. Fortunately, we have a full description of the distribution of um, this variable as well. We say that the variable t has the student's t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, sometimes just called the t distribution. The abbreviation for this is t of n minus 1. It um, always looks about the same, although it is slightly different for different sample sizes of n. In particular, it's always symmetric, and it always has a roughly bell shape. If you have larger values of n, you're going to have slightly less spread. If you're going to have smaller values of n, you're going to have slightly more spread. Here's a plot that shows t of 1, t of 4, and the standard normal distribution. Um, so here we have t, the t distribution with 1 degree of freedom, and to the t distribution with four degrees of freedom. So here you can graphically see that t of one has the most spread. There's um, more probability towards the tail. t of four has slightly less, and n of 0, 0,1, the standard normal distribution, has less still. 
it makes sense that there would be less variability of t um, in the distribution t of n minus 1 as n increases. The sample standard deviation s is just going to be less variable for larger n, meaning that uh, it's going to be a better estimator for the population standard deviation sigma. Now to construct a level c confidence interval, we need for the probability that x bar and mu are within some margin of error e of one another to be c, where c is the level of confidence that we choose in advance. So if we use that um, same variable as before, t equals x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n, we need to have the probability that t is between a couple of cutoffs to be equal to c. We need to pick those cutoffs to make this probability statement true. The picture here looks exactly like the picture that we used when we constructed confidence intervals when the population standard deviation was known. We need to trap area C in between negative T star and positive T star. The only difference now is we're using the distribution T of n minus 1 instead of the distribution n of 0 comma 1. Once we've got that T star, we can make a confidence interval just like before, mu equal x bar, plus or minus t star s over the square root of n. Um, now, the critical value for t star is going to be need, you're going to need to find using technology. Um, there are tables for this. I strongly advise you to steer away from tables for the t distribution, simply because there's a different table for every value of n. Let's see a full example of how this works. Researchers wish to investigate sodium concentrations in a Canadian lake. They collect 23 samples, finding a mean of 24.7 parts per million and a standard deviation of 4.2 parts per million. Again, this is a sample standard deviation. Construct a level 95% confidence interval for the mean sodium concentration in the lake. Since we don't know the population standard deviation, we're going to use this formula. Um, basing our confidence interval on the t distribution. Right away, we can plug in our x bar, 24.7, our sample standard deviation, s equals 4.2, and our sample size, n equals 23. We have to find our critical t value, t star. We want to capture 95% of the area under this graph between negative t star and positive t star which means we're going to leave out 2.5% on each side, to the left and to the right. Um, we are going to find this um, critical t value using an inverse t calculation. An inverse t calculation is going to give us the t value that has the given proportion of area to the left. In R, the command for this is qt. It needs two arguments. First, the area that you want to the left, and second, the number of degrees of freedom. This exactly parallels the inverse normal calculations that we've done previously. In R, the command for that is Q norm. So, using the, Q, the command QT of 0.025 comma 0.22, we get a T star value of 2.074, which we can now plug into our confidence interval. 24.7 plus or minus 2.074 times 4.2 over the square root of 23, which all simplifies down to 24.7 plus or minus 1.8. Notice that the critical t value here, 2.074, is a tiny bit larger than the critical z score would have been for the same level of confidence. That would have been 1.960. Um, this makes sense. Because we don't know the population standard deviation, there's a little bit more uncertainty here. So our confidence interval is going to have to be a little bit wider.